So hello guys, my name is Sabina. I'll show you a picture of me. Um, I'm a counselor. I've been doing counseling for over eight years. Originally from Zimbabwe. I have two married daughters and four grandkids. Some of you know. What else did you know that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you know, I've personally experienced some challenges coming to New Zealand. It wasn't easy for me settling down. I went through so many difficulties. Anyway, welcome to you all. It's such an honor for me to talk to all of you filled up in this room. I'm so excited to talk about a topic I'm passionate about. I really, really love this topic. <laughs> The reason why I like it is because as a counselor, I have spoken to both children or young adults and the parents. And I have done family therapy too. A lot of people are struggling to come together. It's like, you know, the children are playing hip hop and the parents are playing tango, but they want to come together. It's very, very difficult for a lot of people living together. We are immigrants from Botswana, from Somalia, from uh, South Africa, from which other country is represented here? Tanzania? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah, Eritrea. And we come to New Zealand, everything changes. I experienced that myself. Oh wow, what's going on? I want to go back home. I can't stand this. What shall I do? My children can't stand this. One of my daughters said to me, the 30 year old one said to me, Mom, did you know when I was in year 11, for a whole term I didn't go to school because I was being bullied. I couldn't tell me because you'd give me a whip and send me back to school. So all I did was go to school, sit in the library, three o'clock and I come back home. Imagine what our kids go so it's very difficult but for us it's like you have to go to school even if they beat you up or not isn't it we don't get it we don't understand so that's raised questions and that's why i am talking on this topic on how to manage the disconnect anyway so um the reasons why we came here some of the reasons our children will get the best education We'll live better lives in New Zealand. We'll live happily ever after. What are some of the reasons? Why did you come here? Why did you choose New Zealand? What are some of the reasons? Oh my gosh. My husband. Your husband <laughs> brought me and I brought my son, so we all have to go. Yes, what are some of the reasons you came here? Mm -hmm. All the same as you, better life, hope for a better life for the kids. For the kids? Yeah, yeah for and, kids. and for us as well. Yes, and Wallace, why did you choose us in New Zealand? Oh, yeah, career progression and a better opportunity, like better life, yes. Kids. Yes. So what do we get instead coming to New Zealand? We get, our, our children experience immense cultural shock at times. Parents get bullied at work, children get bullied, bullied at work, parents are stressed, children are stressed, parents are fighting because they are stressed. You didn't make me dinner, you didn't clean the house, you didn't do this, you are not helping me. No family time because everyone is busy, we are all working, and it's, people get really disappointed. And we experience subtle racism. We feel like we are treated as second-class citizens. I've felt that myself. I've heard people mim mimicking the way I talk, and I really found it really, like, you know, interfering into my space, and I didn't like it. So some people would tend to drugs if they experience so much pressure. The young adults cannot cope, and they can't take the pressure. Truancy and stubbornness among children, marriage breakups, and some misunderstandings, young people get depressed and they stop attending schools. So this is what the parents say when that happens. My children don't listen to me. I'm going to show them what I want. I've spoken to so many parents and they're like, I'm going to take them back to Africa. 
because here they are so privileged and they don't know what they are doing. I should never have brought them here. I feel so disappointed. My mother and father, or oh, their mother spoil them. Their mother buys them, take away all the time. They shouldn't do that. Look at what's going on with the kids. I'm not allowed to discipline them. Last time someone rang the police for me and I just don't like it yet. And the children are saying, my parents don't love me. They don't understand. All they want is to see me sweep the, my room, clean my house, go to school. I can't tell them I'm being bullied at school. I'm really depressed. I would turn to my friends for advice. And obviously, what do the friends tell them? Do something. My parents are always working. No time for me. It's not my fault that they fight. And some parents end up fighting while the children are listening. Imagine if you two are fighting and the children yet, they get depressed ten times more than you do. So all my parents, what they care about is to see me do chores. My friends told me to get antidepressants and I might secretly try them. I won't even tell my mom because she doesn't get it. I wish someone understood me. They don't even speak English well, my parents. My mom has such a big accent, I'm even embarrassed to talk to her in front of my family or my friends. So this is some of the things that are going on. So what can we do to bridge this gap? That's where the disconnect comes. The children are in their world, the parents are in their world. How can we bridge this gap? Before I talk about bridging this gap, I had an opportunity to have a family therapy session one day and the daughter had organized it. She just turned 18 and you know in that session we had mom, dad, the bigger brother in here from, not from New Zealand, from another country and she said, look here, Mrs. Counselor, I just want to announce to my family I'm 18 years old now and they should just shut up and let me do what I want. If I want to come back home the next day, it's not their business. Please leave me alone. I want my parents to hear this. So some of these things are happening. And is the child wrong? No. Are the parents wrong? No. But we are just not getting each other. Something is wrong between us. Something is going on. So here are some of the ways of sorting out the, ish, uh, the problems which I find kind of working. We don't have all the answers, but some of the things that we can try. The first one, sort out issues, your own issues first. If you want to bridge that gap. As a parent, are you depressed? What are your needs? Sort out your marriage or your relationship. Are you fighting with your wife or your partner? How can you expect your child to be loving when you are not loving yourself? Get some counseling if you need it as a parent. Do some self-care and self-introspection. Change your perspective, change your lenses. Change the way you look at things. I'll give you an example of myself. When I came to New Zealand, my kids were not going to bring their boyfriends in my house. This is how I was raised, right? And that's how I want to raise my kids. But that caused a fight between me and my kids. And I had to change my perspective. I allowed them to bring their boyfriends home. And we were all happy. And, but I kept my eye like that. What are they doing? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Don't touch my baby. <laughs> Give your adult children some loving. Tell them I love you. I worked with another African family and the dad said, no, I can't tell my child I love you. It's beyond me, I can't do it. So sometimes we need to swallow our pride, make time and listen to our children, right? New Zealand and back home at the same time, which is a big ask. We live here and we do things from home. What does that mean? It means living like a, 
uh, Zimbabwean in New Zealand and live in the New Zealand lifestyle, it's hard for us too. It's not just for our kids, it's for us as well. So another responsibility if you are a dad, you are responsible, I give you 80% of the weight to manage your family. I'm really sorry about that, but that's what, those are my views. And for the children, do we have children here? Or someone with their mother here? Or are your parents here? Or? Okay. Your parents here, yeah, those ones. Understand your parents and be willing to learn from them. They love you. Some of the things they might not know, but they are very caring. Communicate your thoughts and your feelings to your parents. Keep away from drugs and alcohol. Sometime down the line you will get to regret it, I'm sorry. Avoid peer pressure and stick to your values. We all have values. Our children have values. So sometimes the peer pressure is so much, we end up changing the way we were taught and the way we view things. Hang out with good, positive people if you are a young adult. Discuss your aspirations, your hopes, your dreams with your parents. Show them your boyfriends or girlfriends. Avoid the hide and, hide and seek. Teach your parents how to use technology. If your parent is like me, you are always teaching me the same thing every day. Right, girls? So be willing to engage with your parents. Right, the, one of the biggest topics that I have yet to deal with is um, when drinking and drugs show up in your home. As an African parent, what do I do? Leave my house, I don't want to see you. Right? This is what some people decide to do. But does that work? Yes, I know someone who, saw, who found some weed hidden in the corner and they said, out, the door is open. It won't work. They will definitely go out and someone will embrace them out there. So the right thing to do is to gently ask your daughter or son what is going on. Exercise restraint, calm down and don't overreact when that happens. Re reassure them of your love. Befriend your children as much as you can. Seek to find out quantities, if it's problematic or not, because sometimes they are just having a half a bottle or half a glass of wine. It might not be that worrying, but if they are having two bottles of wine, then that's a problem. Join in on outings, seek, seek to draw near instead of sending away when you find that problem. Get some help if you find it difficult to take in. Because sometimes it's not easy for us. Like for me, I was raised in a Christian family where I was not even allowed to touch the bottle of beer. And if you find your child drinking, it can be a huge shock. So knowing how to deal with this. The next topic, uh, which is quite a big one, confronted with the LGBTQIA, and you disagree. How do you react to that? Your child comes home one day and they are like, look here, I've come to announce that you brought me to this world as a female and now I want to be a man. It's very difficult to take. So how do I deal with that? I'll give you time for questions a little bit later after this. The first one, deal with your own belief and show before talking to your son or your daughter. Reassure them of your love in that you will always love them. This is the advice. Seek to understand the type because there are so many. So this one is LGBTQIA+. There is so many. They could be plus 15 plus. How many now? 150? Plus genders. Plus lots of them. Someone was saying plus 200 the other day when I did this presentation. There's so much. 
uh, ask them to bring their partner home, which is hard. Explain to your son or daughter that you are finding it difficult. Look here, sweetheart, I love you so much, but I am really finding it difficult to change your name from calling you a woman into a man. I'm struggling. If you're a Christian, of course, enter into the closet and pray quietly. Uh, there are problems too with... Um, there's some way I wrote something on the law, what the law says when this happens. I can't find my notes. What, else, what did you do with my notes? So when this happens, the law has changed now. If some of you didn't know about it, the law has changed. You are not allowed to stop your children from choosing their gender. You are not allowed to pray for them. You are not allowed to do what you may think you can do to change their perspective. It's illegal now. It comes with a five-year jail sentence if you do that. Or you'll be fined. So we need to cover our backs as well when this happens. It's just a precaution. I'm not saying it's going to happen to your kids. But if we know some of these things, it can be very helpful. And this is what we are dealing with in my world. Parents getting a shock and saying, no, I'm not going to take this. Does anyone have any questions there? Or anything that I've said? You guys are too quiet. You're scaring me out. <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> Sister Elma. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about how parents can... Yeah, thank you for the advice. It is there. Yeah. However, it is not always that easy to apply this. So, how... Did you ever have a situation not that you have to talk about any particular case where you had to deal with a family who could not come to groups with an issue between themselves and the child, and how did you deal with them? I've had plenty of them. Plenty of them. Sometimes when they come to us, the child is kicked out of the house, and the government is always helping them. You know how the government will just say, come to us, we can give you accommodation, we can give you money, we can do this and that. So it's very difficult, yes, that's why we are doing this. Because mostly it's our communities. It's unfortunate many people didn't come, but our people, some of them end up in jail at some stage. We have had so many immigrants coming to New Zealand, and at some stage, the child will call the police on their father or their mother. So it's good to know some of these things. So the way we deal with them is individual therapy and then family therapy, which places us in a very difficult position because we have to support the child and we have to support the parents. So it's very difficult. Some of these things are helpful, like you know what children can do, what the parents can do to bridge this gap. Hmm. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Just a comment. Um, yeah. I know this is well and good, but there are some religious faiths that we can start. And it's a no no from them. So, how is this sensitive to those religious faiths? We have some form of allowances that we do. Because I mean, if this was to be applied, there is a trick the apparatus. Sorry? So if you were to apply that very strictly to some religious people, they end up as a... Which they, one? Which part? The one about boyfriends, girlfriends, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> or the one about the kids bringing their boyfriends home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is not like this is what you have to do, but it's advice. Out of, you know, working with these people, you know, parents and children fighting over the lifestyle here, we don't get each other. So after looking at this, you know, looking at what, what can we do to kind of help the situation. And so many kids have been kicked out of the world. 
and I know plenty of them. And the fights are so bad. And they suicide too. Are you aware people are taking their lives? African kids. African kids. Just for that thing, or yes. Be Even be African be kids, be immigrants, they are taking their lives. Because the parents are saying, well, this is my faith. I'm not going to take this. So what can we do? We don't have all the answers, but you know, we've got some, some of the things that parents could do. Yes, Francois, well, you wanted to say something? Yeah, pretty much kind of the same uh, friend of idea, in terms of like, really, because I understand we have to accommodate people more tolerant and, okay, not express anger, but be gentle and tell them, I'm just finding hard to comprehend. Yes. It's different generation, but this I was brought up, and uh, yeah, uh, really, some, it's a charm, change kind of uh, adjustment of culture and mentality yes. and for somebody like me who grew up in those yes. kind of severe you know restrictions mm -hmm. you know it's uh it can't be an overnight thing yes you know there's just that thing of uh, it's very difficult. Your, your, you know mm. your son is adam mm. and tomorrow says no call me nelly <laughs> and i'm susan from now on you know it's uh it's i don't know if i can swallow that however yes, it's good it's to hear difficult. these uh, yeah. advices and it's a shame if kids get to the point of taking their own lives because yes. we have to. Yeah. Mm. Maybe uh, the approach would be to send them to Africa. <laughs> yeah, feel the pain. That's, not that's me, I'm just saying that's because that's how I am. Because <laughs> in Africa, they give you some good community therapy and uh, it will change you. <laughs> they give you a heart. You, know, you, you, you guys need to understand I struggle with that too. If my child were to show up and say, look, I've changed my gender. I would like, I don't know how I would react. It's very hard. But what shall we do? We are here in New Zealand. But what, what is your opinion in terms of a trans counselor with your experience? And I respect that. Hmm. What, is, uh, what, what is your take on terms of uh, all this? Because me to me, I'm looking at like, hey, parents, you have no more power. Your powers are stripped that off. That's how I feel. You know, that's how I feel. Is it, yes, am I that's accurate? How I, feel. I totally agree. And now even five-year-olds can change their gender. Do you know that? Who? A five-year-old can choose to change their gender and you've got to keep quiet. Yeah. And it's the law. It's it's illegal for you to say no. Yeah. And you, you, you have to spare them the, the legal all the time. side of things were passed. Yes, my brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a, a comment as well, just to end on what everyone is saying. Mm -hmm. The way I see it, I think it's, it's, it's not just New Zealand and it's not just like Africa. I think there's a global culture shift uh, with the 21st century. So things have changed. So that's the stuff that probably we could also, as parents, to try and grapple with as individuals to understand that the 21st century is not just here or there. Yes. or this community or that community. Yes, it's a global thing. The things like gender is, mm. is fluid now, mm. you know? So a man can, can become a woman, exactly. and a woman can become a man, yes. and it's acceptable. And none of those two. Yes. It's acceptable, yeah. Mm. So, so it's something that we all have to uh, mm. come to terms with. Yes. And, and negotiate. And negotiate. Yeah. And it's against our faith. Yeah, it's against yeah. our faith. We even, are like, culture, yeah. even our culture, yeah. it's not acceptable. Yeah. But we have chosen to live here, haven't we? It's yeah. happening in America as well. It's happening in Australia. It's happening in Africa. Canada. Even in Africa. Even in Africa. Uh, even in Africa, people mm. are grappling with these uh, yes. issues now. You yeah. look at the news, you yeah. see people talking about this mm. everywhere. So it's, that's yes. why I say so. Global culture shift yes. that's probably uh, fueled by mm. neoliberal thinking of exactly. freedom, mm. thinking about mm. the uh, rights of freedoms yes, and freedoms exactly. globally. It's unbelievable. Yeah, so, so it's the stuff that we all have to mm. come to terms with. Yes. Yeah. So, my message to you is when it shows up, because you know, it might not show up to our very own kids, but we are all going to have grandkids at some stage. It might show up there. What is Nana going to do? Or to their children. 
the, we are building generations here. So we need to kind of shift somehow and say, maybe start praying now it doesn't happen to your grandkids. <laughs> I like I like the, the fact that you are super ambitious that we're gonna have grandkids. But the way things are sounding, we I'm might to not. Say, is that gonna happen? Well, I'm. Let's say if yeah, you already are. Some of us, are we ready? Some real robots. Yeah. So just clarifying the legality side of things. It's something that we all are struggling with. But there's some legality side of issues that we need to be on the watch out for. Well, you talked about the fact that to To change the agenda. Without parents' consent, yeah? If I understand the whole thing. Well, explain. if your child says, Mom, I want to be a girl. Right? At age five. five. At five, right? And then I'll just say, yeah, okay. And then, <laughs> this child picks up the phone and they ring the police. Yeah. I want girl clothes, I want to be a girl, and my parents are saying, no. that's illegal. Five so years, I mean, they're still barely out of, yes. uh, they are not out of yes. the ladies, are they? So what if the child is still... It's, it's, it's just the happened, in the... Let's say I could just tell you, it's still going to be Are they going to do with the child, or are they going to do I don't know, but this is the legality side of things. It has happened in the States just a few um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. A five-year-old rang and said, my parents are not allowing me to wear a dress. I know I'm a girl. And they got into trouble. That's how bad things are going. Look, okay, look, let, let's put this in perspective, right? Mm -hmm. We know the world is changing and yeah. so everything is, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. we are aging, the planet is aging, everything. Yeah. But uh, I mean, at 18, yes. a man or a young woman becomes adult, young adult, yes. can join the army. Yes. If you are into trying to, to experiment a bit of uh, beverage, you can vote. Yes. You, are allowed, you can vote, mm -hmm. you know? And of course, like you said, like once one of your clients, a young person, said to you that I'm 18 now, she mm -hmm. my parents to shush, I can do what I want. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think at 18 I can actually shush. Yes. This is my view. A, yeah. Because there's no other way, otherwise, mm -hmm. you just bring conflict. Yes. If it's 18, you I know shush. this dude or this young woman knows what they are doing, the brain is fully developed. Yeah. I seriously have to adapt because yeah. the whole migrating to a new place, yeah. you adjust to the situation mm -hmm. and the environment, it's not the environment to adjust to you. But if my adjustment has to deal with anybody under 18, mm -hmm. I'm afraid it's, it's a very, very difficult, very you difficult. Know? That's what I think. You know? And I don't know how this law was passed. I thought it written somewhere, I don't know where, what happened. Are you talking about conversion yeah. of bail? The yes. conversion, yes. The yeah. conversion. So my yeah. question was like, how has that affected you as a counselor? Has it affected you at all? If so, how? Because like, there was an amendment where conversion therapy has become a legal news one. Mm -hmm. How has that as a like, counselor affected you? Or the or, conversion yeah. therapy? No, it hasn't affected me as that such. Right. But the people come to us with these issues. Like my parents are not accepting me, and you know they want me to change back into whatever I want. They want to do the conversion therapy, and I respect them, but that's not what I want, right? So that's those are the people who come to us. Yeah, I was just wondering because since it has become illegal for counselors, is there like a guideline what you're supposed to talk about or not to talk about? Is, uh, if a parent comes with a child who's um, gay or identify themselves as lesbian, mm -hmm. is there certain words or certain things that you cannot say to them? Yes. It could be identified as conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. But we don't say change back. Yeah, conversion just, therapy is advising mm -hmm. them to, to, turn, um, to yeah. turn back, yeah. right? Say if they come to me and they are like, look, I am a female, but I want to be a man. I have, I'm not allowed to say, go back and be a female. That will put me into trouble, right? So my job is to support whatever their choices are. But would they give them a wrong picture of what that means? Uh, they sometimes they don't even this. want to hear the picture. You have to be careful, too. Yeah. So if they say, we have people come to us uh, who look female, 
but they are men, right? Mm -hmm. So, for and they want to use the men, the female men. I'm, I'm talking about the shapes that we grow up. Grown ups are going to like the kids. And the just be able to tell them that, look, we want to do this, but this is what it means. Yeah. Yeah. Girl, girl, 15 and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So that they get the whole picture and they will inform the decision because they've been deemed to make a decision, right? Yes. So they need to have all the facts to tell you yeah. what they are going to face in the world. Yes. Yeah. But that's not conversion there. It's a matter of <laughs> telling them. Yeah. I, I, can't, I, ca I can't do that. It's very tight. Uh, but what I can do is navigate with them what they want to be. If they are confused, right? If they are confused. So you're a female, let's look at what a female is like. A female is da 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 da. And a male, let's look at what a male is like. They are da 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 da. da. We put that clear on paper, even if it means we have to write it down somewhere very loud and clear. We do that. And then who do you want to become? I don't want all this, I want to become a male. So how are you going to do it? Do you have support? You know, these are the organizations that will support you because there are some organizations who support them. Can you ring this number? Can you go and see these people? Can you do this? Are you feeling safe? What do you need? Right? So that's, that's the approach we use if they don't know. But we have no right to say, surely, you look handsome as a boy. Why do you want to become a We can't do that. I will end up in prison. So I have a question around, I'm just thinking for African parents, mm. like, so for me, if I'm, if I'm taking, if my child has that sort of issue, if I'm bringing them to your um, establishment, mm. I'm just thinking about, because we've covered a bit on cultural competence, mm. so we tend to rely on people who understand our background mm. and our cultures and mm. our way of thinking to sort of come to our aid mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with government and mm -hmm. organizations. So if, if an African parent like me is bringing my child to your uh, establishment to assist with this sort of issue, mm -hmm. um, so the thinking is, for me, I will be looking up to you yes. to sort of, uh, sort of help me out, give, throw me a lifeline mm -hmm. and, and help me out with my child. Mm -hmm. So is this, is this even possible or should we, um, is this something that you can navigate, like you mentioned, safely through to mm. stare mm. that child uh, towards my end because we, it's, it's give and take, it's 50-50, so they yes. always say we should meet um, yeah. along the middle, yes. but yeah, is there any such way yes. that you can safely navigate? And the honest truth is that has happened before exactly that but when we do this we also have to follow the guidelines hello 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 late comers we are just closing down ah. <laughs> closing <prayer. laughs> it's a closing prayer <laughs> always come, the same come late yeah so anyway we also have to the first thing is i need to cover my back right because i don't want to put myself into trouble I do understand where you are coming from as a parent, like it's not something that I would want for my child. But then this child is what they want. So it's looking at if I go this way, I can't support anyone because we can't give advice. We can only open up, you know, this is what you are choosing. You are choosing to go for an operation and have your boobs cut off. Is this what you want, right? So that's our job. Yes. And you know, you are aware your parents are not happy with this? Yes. What do you think about it? How do you want them to help you? How do you want them to support you? How are you going to manage it if your parents are not agreeing with your decision? Those kind of things. That's the much I can do, but at the same time in my heart I'll be like, oh, how can they make that decision? It's difficult. Anyway, that comes, we are just talking about uh, this topic, the LGBTQTIA plus 
when it visits you in your house, how do you manage it? When your grandson or granddaughter or even your child decides this is what I want, what do you do? So we are at a stage where people are just asking questions. Do you have any questions? I pray for a month. Respond, you pray and fast for a month. And say, then let's go for holidays and do yeah. like what in Africa we will do in the village. Yeah. And leave them in Africa, yes. Uh, I think the, the reaction of most African parents is reacting immediately. Reacting by either shouting at the top of, you know how Africans are, we shout at the top of the voice as if if you talk softly, he doesn't hear. Then, then, then we scold and possibly beat the chick kid and try to make them straight by beating them. <laughs> yeah, making them straight. That's in. a good one. It just happened in America. A father went to the states, right? Yeah. And he uh, worked really hard for some years to bring their children over. And then he brought this 18-year-old son. And this 18-year-old son was, you know, misbehaving and, you know, doing all sorts. And he did this. So the father was deported and the son is in the States right now. This is a recent one. Yeah, that's why I so, uh, I should cry for a month. <laughs> so that uh, so I was saying the question is what do I do? Yes. So I was saying what people usually do. Mm. So personally, the reaction I would do is I would sit down and listen to what happened mm. because I believe some of these people they they have something that turned them that way. Mm. So. It's best to listen, mm. then find a way to resolve it after listening. Because usually when something like that happens, we just say it's not acceptable, full stop. Mm. But it's better to understand where it's coming from. And so to reason with them. Yeah. To, yeah. We are talking about five years old. Five years old, man. Five years old, kid. You're still in nappies. No, uh, I think five years. Is the question is, it for five no, years for from, from, from five years old? Years. But anyone is now allowed to. You can't, because the conversion therapy bill was passed, you can't dispute anything. If your five year old son says to you, Look, dead, buy me a dress. I want to be a female. Right? And you, sit down with them and, and you say, sit down with them and say, no, you can't do that. Play. And yeah. if they ring the police, then they will come and investigate. No, but if they demand for me to use my admin <laughs> to buy something that, that, that that's abusing my right. <laughs> so, is it a school production? Is it like a theater I play? So that's a question for that It's a change day. of life. They want to change. <laughs> Because maybe their friends are changing, so they want to do the same. Mm. What do you think, my sister? Um, for me, uh, I would go for counseling myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would seek counseling. <laughs> right now, in my state of mind, mm. it's not accepted. So, yeah, I would, I would seek help. Yes. First, for yes. myself, how do I, I would Yes. Yeah. Collapse may be an end up in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> People will resuscitate you. It's very, very difficult. So, we've got here yeah, deal with your own belief and shock before taking for your son or your daughter, before talking to them. So, that's a good one. Deal with your shock. And if you are a praying person, praying about it. But if they hear you pray, you are in trouble. Hey, why? It's clear on the on the conversion. Have you seen it? Do you have it? I don't have a Bible. It's very clear. You can't pray. You can't go and say, I need to pray for you. Maybe you are going crazy. It's part of us. It's part of trying to change, especially the church people. We are targeted. 
for wanting to change people into who they are. So prayer is not allowed. So you have to do it at a mountain somewhere. Uh, I think you meant to say prayer while you are being heard. Yes, while you are being heard. You can say to a child, okay, let's hold hands and pray about this. Even if you are in the closet, they can't hear you pray. If they record you, then that can be a problem. It's not me, please. It's the Lord. It's, it's a difficult topic. It's a very difficult like, topic. Uh, even this gender neutral, among all those, is uh, gender neutral. Where people you can't say he or he or yes. she. Hey. So, so that's hey. difficult. When you're dealing yes. with people, you meet someone for the first time, you don't know them, yes. you have to be careful how yes. you address them. They might be look like a lady, but they but is a they man. Are not. And you might have offended. Yes. So it's really difficult. It's very difficult. Yes. And you know what, guys, for your own information, this sort of people and whatever is going on in this world, it's on the increase. The increase is not slow, it's just sharp. So we really need to be aware this is going on. Yeah, because that, I don't know, that brings me to, I mean, that's why I'm formed in terms of like general knowledge and following international news. It was like maybe uh, something like close to a decade or up to you know, like maybe 12 years ago. In France, you know how you call Mayor, Monsieur, which is Mister. Mm -hmm. Madame, which is of course uh, you know lady, mm -hmm. and then uh, Mademoiselle, which is young lady, you know, like mm -hmm. Miss. Mm -hmm. They cut that. You can't call even if she is two years. You call them Madame. Madame used to be identified as a woman, married mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. That yes. now because of uh, if you call me Mademoiselle, that means you know everybody you know I'm not married. So now it's Madame. Wow. So I think that was the beginning of all this because the title now you can't call yes. me Mister, mm -hmm. you can call me Miss or mm -hmm. Mrs. Because I don't, don't know, know that's why here they call people Miss, even if you are married. Mm -hmm. It is not Mrs. Mm -hmm. It is M.S. Miss. Just so to avoid all that. Mm -hmm. You just say, no, PC. And in schools too, isn't it in schools they are talking about this? Uh, are you talking about uh, the gender? The gender yeah. issues. There is a topic dedicated, I mean, a subject dedicated to um, sexuality education. We actually have it as a session. You did, yeah. Yeah. We had it okay. yeah. And it's a very difficult uh, um, topic mm -hmm. because um, because all this, these changes are not new, but they are still new. Yes. You know what I mean? It has been happening a while, mm -hmm. but it's coming in within our in our spaces. Yes. And uh, it's hard for parents to, to, you know, it's hard for me to comprehend, not yes. just to comprehend, but to, to, to marriage myself with, you know, having to do like an older person mm. that this is how it is yes. and we have to accept it because it is actually mm. ultimately it is for the protection of the child mm. ultimately mm. yeah whether wrong or right whether agreed or not agreed mm. it is for the protection of the mm. child because mm. children are being bullied mm. children are their, their, their self-worth mm. are being you know are in question mm. Especially if they do not know who they are, mm -hmm. we are supposed to be supportive of them. Yes. Yeah, right. And parenting are, is not an easy job. Nobody it's very ever. difficult. No, no. And they are taking their lives too. It's so sad. Yeah. If so you didn't know it's happening way, in us. Yeah, the African way that we often so talk about is not necessarily a good way. Mm. You know, even back in Africa where we were growing up, mm -hmm. uh, it's to, that way was probably not the best way, but it was the way that our parents knew. Mm. Uh, was it good for us? Yes. Was it bad for us? For some people it was not good. For some mm. people it was... Uh, mm. so, yeah. Yeah. The African way, I'm very worried when we talk about the African way, because Africa is a diverse society as well. Mm. You know, there are... Femicide mm. is a big problem in Africa. Mm. And very, many of these topics, you mm. know, are used as reasons yeah. to kill people of that um, mm -hmm. group. Yeah. Uh, do we can do it to we manage that? it? Is that the African way? Mm -hmm. That is what happened in Africa. So mm -hmm. we have to be careful of how we address this one. Thank you.
thought and yes. I really appreciate what she said because the one thing that I actually like growing up here, mm -hmm. you come from different com uh, completely different culture and you come here and kind of try to understand. But uh, like in the first, like in the beginning, just what is this? You don't understand it, but then just to see, try to see the reasoning and then you question who do you ask those questions to. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent, it's very important when a child asks you a simple question, don't shut them off. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some parents that I know if they ask them some questions, they're like, Jesus Christ, don't say that, don't say this. They're yeah, going to yes. get the answer from someone else mm -hmm. that you don't want them to. They're going to get the answer from a different very person. So it's very important you answer mm -hmm. your children's question very carefully mm -hmm. and what you want them to mm -hmm. template in them as well. Mm -hmm. And if we do not know the answers, we do not know the answers. Tell them I don't we'll know. take time with them mm -hmm. and try to understand. Yeah. I just don't really think, I just don't understand mm -hmm. anyway. But we could try to protect our child. It's for the love of the child. Mm -hmm. It's mostly for the love of the child, the protection of the child. Yes. And they are under much pressure as well because they are exposed to social media. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, how they sometimes have to, where they get the answers from. Um, which is probably not the best place to get the information. Yes, you want to I just wanted to say this topic is a dilemma not only to African people, but even in the Western world. Because on the news, recently there was a, a, an article on the news yes. where someone claims he was like a woman yes. and then committed a crime when in being incarcerated he was. He was jailed in a prison, uh, women's prison, mm -hmm. yes. and then he impregnated. Uh, is no, it? I did not impregnate. He raped <laughs> six women. Six women. Yeah, because he and, just and, and they got pregnant. Me. So, how could we balance the the, the 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 rights of people who feel like what they feel and protecting the so bringing it home is. Here we, we have sleepovers. Mm -hmm. So someone who identifies as a, 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 a girl comes to my house <laughs> and wants to sleep with the, the girls <laughs> because you know because of logistics. <laughs> so the, you see how how am I protecting myself exactly. without uh, making them feel unwelcome? Mm. That's a good one too. Really, really good. So it's tricky for all of us. It's tricky for all of us. We don't know how to manage things. So maybe not inviting them into your house. What else can you do if you are worried? They will feel segregated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but I understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think during the presentation, if I remember what I've said, is I'm not. You may have, or if I'm wrong, you may have mentioned something like, in fact, you just said it now, two minutes ago, that things are changing, but they're going like, they're not going to decrease, they're going to increase just and shoot up, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that there may be some organization out there that are going to be supporting these kids who are, mm -hmm. or people who are in this transition, because yes. let me just call it this phase, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for shocked parents like me mm -hmm. and others out there, mm -hmm. are there any organizations that are going to be supportive of us? Because they, okay. My cousin or mm -hmm. uh, no, somebody, they are doing a group for my children, <laughs> comes with that. The parent is like shocked. Yes. Are there any organizations that are going to be supporting the poor shocked parents? Yes. Because they've got already for these people. Yeah. How about us? But not for us. Uh, so so what, that's who's going to support to us? For, Only now, God? for now, it's just looking for counseling. Jesus. You come and sit in with somebody who will help you somehow, somewhere. And we can cry together because I don't want it on my kids too. You know? It's really mm. it's difficult. So I will end soon. I will end just now. Just some self-care with your families, you know, being with your children, learning new school skills, playing games with them, avoiding too much social media, making meals together, trying new things. It's very important with your families. <coughs> building relationships so um, our children don't feel lost all the time because <coughs> some parents have no time for their kids we really need to make time for them and remember there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to raising kids in Shona what do we say 
I wouldn't say I've done it. I've managed to raise successful kids. We all struggle. We are in this together. There's no one who is better than the other. So it's supporting each other. If you have a problem, getting some help. If your child has got a problem, getting some counseling for them if you can. Or asking them to get counseling or whatever. <coughs> I hope I have done something good for everyone. Sister Bina, yeah. are there any uh, links that you can share with us, maybe not now, at the latest stage, mm -hmm. of uh, where we can go for support if parents need support? Okay. Fran, should I just point it out? Where are the support organizations for parents? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm sure they should be. Uh, they they are. must be. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so we could start a support organization ourselves because support yes. organizations are started by the people yes. affected by exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. So one of the organizations is us. We have this organization called Reach Out. We have a number of counselors who can see you. If I know you, I won't see you because it's, it's not, it's unethical. So we can refer you to someone else. And if I know other organizations, I will let you guys know. So all the best. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. circle of uh, community because some of us are not Christians, we are of other faiths. So the karakia is more seen as something that, you know, just not really belonging to anyone in particular. So if there's anyone who can do a karakia for us, I'll be happy because I can't do it myself. I haven't learned to do it. Uh, Wallace? <laughs> I've not reached that level. Uh, okay. Are you going to do it first? Still learning to read. It can be in any language. Father of creation, the beginning and end of everything, you are the love by excellence. We learn love from you. I just want to say thank you for gathering us here for this meeting. And thank you because you know our strength and our weaknesses. Thank you for what we learned, although it's frustrating, but thank you because we are informed and only you can help us to deal with whatever comes our way. For you give hope. Help us and we pray for those who are going to face this situation that they will seek wisdom from above from you so that they can cope and go through it. For the rest of the session, as we are about to partake the food, we do pray blessings for those who prepare it and anybody who contributes towards it. And thank you for anybody who was able to come and join us this afternoon. Bless us for the rest of the weekend. Help our families. Help us do that which is good and not evil. But you can only help us. Thank you. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, I think we have a feedback form. Do we have a feedback form online? That yes, I will send it out. Okay. So, uh, Kendall will send out feedback so that you just share with us your opinion about how this session went. Uh, another thing, Sister Denise, was the other topic. Sister Denise had a bit of... Um, a problem at home. Her son is at the moment at the, in the hospital, oh, but it's food poisoning. But it looks like he's settling now, but he's in Wellington Hospital. Uh, if you want more information, to go and see him. I can find out from her if that's possible. And you can just ask the question on the group and I will answer uh, privately. Oh, sorry, we can't do it on the group because maybe she didn't even share it herself, right? But anyway, so if anyone wants to visit Sister Denise's daughter or son, I think it's a son, she's got three sons. Uh, please let me know and I can get in contact with her there at home. She's in Wellington Hospital. Uh, 
and she apologized. She would have talked about homeschooling. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Thank time. you so much. Pardon? Next time, next session. She um, unfortunately time. not, because we've already worked on our sessions uh, up to the end almost. But who knows? We did put her in somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming. And please come back next week. We have a session every, day, every Saturday in term time until the 6th of June. And these are very important topics, as you can see. We cannot get enough of these topics. It's almost like we just got started on this one. Thank you so much for coming. Our oh, next week's topic is going to be um, Jawahir is our speaker, and she will be talking about what school counselors, what parents can expect from school counselors. Yeah, it's in that area, school counseling. Awesome. Oh, yes, thank you to our, sorry. Thank you to our caterers. Yes. I know you pray, but I just want to say thank you to them. And the other person that we not want to thank, she's not here right now, the person who's been taking care of our children every, every week. Thank you. Thank you, Alice, for sharing yeah. her with us. Thank you. Amen.